In this video, Trader is going to explore the question, does selling make price go down? Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. All right, thank you for joining me. Okay, so great question this. Does selling make price go down? This is because this, this is a great question. Why? Because it shows me that you're thinking about the price structure and wondering why and going into supply demand, going in the concept of gaming theory, all the kind of stuff talking about this because I think it's so, so crucial to understand because very often the mistake we make as traders is we hop straight into doing complex technical analysis, trying to find the next trade, trying to develop a strategy momentum strategy, stop losses, all the kind of stuff that we can go into. And we don't actually spend time thinking about the very, very basics, which even though they are basics, so to speak, they're so useful, guys. I can't stress how useful it is to think clearly about what is happening to cause a price to go down or to cause a price to go up or to cause a price to break out. And then you go a little bit further and go, well, why does the price do what it should do if I'm taking this trade? Why is someone going to buy after I've bought? You know, and not to repeat myself, I'm going to all this all about this, but in this video, I want to briefly talk about does selling make the price go lower or make the price go down? So let's have a look at an example. So here we've got, uh, it could be anything. This could be a stock, could be a currency, uh, USD JPY, current market price for USD JPY. Now, it is very slightly different for Forex because we don't have a centralized exchange. Almost every other market has a centralized exchange like crude oil, you trade it on NYMEX, like stocks, trade it on NYSE or NASDAQ or LSE, whatever it may be. Forex is a little bit different, but you've got kind of lots of different exchanges into bank exchanges and they're all aggregated to one. So slightly different, but the concept is identical, guys. Okay, so imagine whatever the instrument this is. There's your bid, there's your ask. Now, what would happen, and just assume that we have got one centralized exchange for now, what happens uh, to, if the selling make the price go down? So let's think what happens when you come in and sell something. So you have a large quantity to sell, and let's say you've got, um, let's assume it's, assume it's a futures contract for now, and you've got a thousand contracts to sell, okay? And normally, let's say at this price now, there's a hundred contracts available, because that's how it effectively works, the order book. You know, you've got, the order book will be stacked like this, pretty much, and if it's a currency, that's gonna be in millions or tens of millions, uh, rather than contracts. If it's futures, it's gonna be contracts. If it's sh uh, a share or stock, it's gonna be shares. So you've got liquidity here, it's called liquidity of the order book going down. So so it'll be stacked like this and on this side as well. You've got 10, you've got 11, you've got 12. And there'll be different levels of price or quantity available at that price. So what it basically means is even if there's one available there, this best price will still be 09, but if you wanted to buy more than one, you'd have to pay more than 09. Okay, so it's pretty much, um, you know, pretty simple to understand that. But what happens when someone comes in and sells? Does that make the price go down? Well, let's look at two scenarios here. The first scenario is I come in and I sell 150 contracts or 150 shares or 150 million of this currency pair. I come in, I don't want to wait for it. I just want to sell it straight away. I sell it and I sell it at market and I get filled 100 of them at 08, I get filled 50 of them at 07. Now the last price is probably gonna be 06 because I've taken all those there, all those there, and let's say there's 70 sitting there. Now the price is gonna be 06. So the I, my selling has made the price print 0807. Now the last price, which is very often what we see printed on charts and stuff as opposed to the bid and the offer, will be 07, right? Because I've taken 100 at 08, I've taken 50 at 07, Seven, so the last price is going to go seven. So in that instance, my selling or your selling has caused the price to go from wherever the last price was. If it was last traded at 09, it'll be 09 because it was on the offer or the ask. If the last price was traded at 08, the ask, like, it will be 08 because it was on the bid. But it's going to move from whatever that last price was down to 07 because I've cleared out the 08 and my net and I or you the selling has caused the price to go down to 07. Now, if we'd sold more, you can see how much further we'd go down. And this is when liquidity comes in. If you're selling 150, there happens to be 10,000 there, then you're not gonna adjust the price. Unless, of course, the last trade was at 09, and you're trading at 08. So in theory, 
If you bought, sold, bought, sold, the price would change 0809, 0809, 0809. Okay, so that's just really when it trades based on the last price. But you're selling and you're clearing the order book, then you start to move the price lower. And then in theory, someone else could now come in and offer 08 or 07, and it'll be 06 to 07. So you're selling has caused the price to go lower. However, that doesn't always apply because hopefully you can see now it depends on how much liquidity is available here as to whether selling makes the price go down. Example, let's say we had 100,000 sitting there and you came in to sell 100 and the last price was 08. So the last price is printing 08. You come in, you sell 100, it prints 08 again. It takes that down to 99,990 or whatever it is, or 99,900, excuse me, because you're selling 100. So it doesn't move price at all. In fact, you could sell 1,000 and it wouldn't move price. You could sell 50,000 and it wouldn't move the price because the price available at that price is 100,000. So selling doesn't necessarily make the price go down. Selling makes the price go down if, if there's not enough liquidity for that sell order. And imagine now, we're talking about just one person and one transaction here. So you come in and you sell a thousand. Yes, it's fine. You sell a million. Yes, you're gonna make the price go down. Now, imagine that extended out into multiple different sellers and multiple different buyers. Hundreds of sellers, hundreds of buyers, all with different quantities. Price will go down if the aggression of those sellers and the volume of those sellers is more than those buyers right at that moment in time. So those buyers are what we call passive because they're sitting there on the bid, they're waiting for price to come to them. Those sellers are aggressive. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that price will go down as we see, but it's a starting point because price will never go down if sellers are just sitting there waiting for price to come to them. So we're gonna have the aggression first, which is taking that bid, tick. Now for price to go lower, the volume of sell orders, the volume of futures contracts or the volume of stock or the volume of whatever we're talking has to be higher than the available price at that first point, at that first best bid. If it is, the next bid will be printed and that's what makes price go lower. So imagine that extended out into a longer period of time when we get much more selling and we can imagine that in a very heavy selling environment, you've got not much here, but every single one person wants to sell, loads of people want to sell. If you've got a few buyers, you can see how price moves much quicker than it would do if you just got a slight imbalance. So in other words, you know, a little bit of a tick down, then maybe get a little bit of a tick up. That's why you can get choppy markets. It's only because the imbalance is very, very slight and different. So you're gonna get a little bit up, a little bit down, a little bit up, a little down. A very aggressive market, the imbalance is huge, low liquidity on the bid perhaps, or even if there is high liquidity, it doesn't mean, it doesn't either way, it doesn't matter, as long as the selling pressure is greater than the buying pressure, then they're gonna keep going lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. One final thing guys, before we uh, kind of end it there, is the concept, the volume isn't necessarily a key factor to it, it's the difference in volume to the aggressor and the passive bidder. If you think about it, if, if that was uh, a million sitting there, you could have a million sitting on the bid and a million could hit it and yeah, it would still trade at 08, it wouldn't even go into the 07. So a million could be a big number, but the fact that it's balanced out means that it's not gonna move. It's only when you get the imbalance that the price moves. So does selling make the price go down? Under certain circumstances, it does. If it's very aggressive, it's, it's larger volume, and important thing, it's larger than what's available on the bid, on the order book, then it will make price go down because they want to sell, 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 and there isn't the buyers to soak that up. So they have to go lower price, lower price, lower price, lower price to find the liquidity they want to fulfill that order. Anyway, hope that's helped. See you next one. Take care. Bye-bye.